the count grows higher by the day, it seems. NBC News has fired Matt Lauer, as you have heard by now. Barely 24 hours after they say they first received a complaint of sexual misconduct against him. That announcement came this morning from Lauer's Today co-host, Savannah Guthrie. Good morning. Breaking news overnight. Matt Lauer has been terminated from NBC News. We are heartbroken. I'm heartbroken for Matt. He is my dear, dear friend and my partner, and he is beloved by many, many people here. And I'm heartbroken for the brave colleague who came forward to tell her story and any other women who have their own stories to tell. How do you reconcile your love for someone with the revelation that they have behaved badly? Mm -hmm. And I don't know the answer to that. Pretty heavy moment. A story released by Variety shortly after Lauer was fired offered further lurid details about his behavior while at NBC. Reportedly gave a colleague a sex toy as a president and expressed a desire to use it with her. Also reportedly invited a different woman into his office and dropped his pants. While she was there, Variety found three women willing to accuse him of harassment, though it is worth noting that none of them were willing to do so by name. Harvey Levin founded the celebrity news site TMZ. He also hosts Objectified every Sunday at 8 here on Fox. Harvey Levin joins us tonight. Harvey, what's the latest on this? Well, you know, Tucker, the interesting thing that we're pursuing, NBC is saying that this is the first complaint yeah. they received on Monday, which I, I get. But the issue is not necessarily the first complaint. The issue is when did people start talking about this? And there is a video which we found from 2006. Um, and this is when Meredith Vieira was co-hosting with him. And you know the way it works on these morning shows where at 725 and 825, they go to the local stations for a right. five minute news break. There is a station in Kansas that didn't go to the local station and they just kept the, um, the feed going from the Today Show in New York. And you have this video that we found. We do, and we're gonna um, put it on the air uh, right now so our viewers can, can know what we're talking about. Here. These are just cross talks, and I'll meet you outside. Okay, see ya. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah. I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling. Hey, sweater. Keep bending over like that, it's a nice view. So that, that aired uh, in Kansas live? It aired in Kansas, but, you ha but the reason I think it's really significant is, remember, he has a microphone on, it's a hot mic, right. hey, there's a control room there, people could listen, including the executive producer, and so, you know, this stuff was apparently going on, and, you know, and, and then there's another video that we got from 2012, Andy Cohen does his show on Bravo, Watch What Happens Live, which, by the way, is owned by NBC at Bravo, and... Katie was asked by, by um, Andy, uh, what's the most annoying thing about Matt Lauer? And I'll paraphrase uh, that she said, well, he, he always would pinch my butt. Right. And so, and that made some news actually. So there were kind of rumblings, uh, you know, of things that were going on for a long time. And even though NBC didn't receive a complaint until Monday, I guess one of the things people are wondering about is, you know, how could all of this have been so secret? Right. Well, that is that is a question. And apparently uh, there are at least off the record accounts of former NBC employees saying, look, we, we went to management, but we're brushed off. The timeline's a little bit confusing. So the incident for which Lauer was apparently fired took place in during the 2014 Winter Olympics. And in then, Sochi. In Sochi. And, but produced a relationship that continued after that. What do you know about that? Well, there are reports now uh, that there might have been photos that Matt Lauer sent to an intern. The New York Post uh, wrote about this uh, late this afternoon, just a few minutes ago, actually, that may have sent these pictures uh, to this intern who still works at NBC. So, you know, I, I don't know the specifics, but, you know, I, I, it does everything we're hearing is that the complaint emanates from Sochi. Um, you should also know that uh, Noah Oppenheim, who is the current NBC News president, yes. had meetings separately uh, today with the various shows on NBC News, uh, Dateline, Meet the Press, Nightly News, and he didn't get into uh, he didn't get into the specifics of why they fired Matt, nor did he talk about who's going to replace Matt. But he did say, you know, at a point he said, look, we could do a better job, you know, in terms of encouraging women, and said that these avenues are open 
open now and they have different ways that people can make these complaints, but there's a lot of tumult going on over at NBC right so now. So just to be clear, I mean, Noah Oppenheim, the news chief, as you just said, is one of the people who squelched uh, the Dylan Farrow piece on Harvey Weinstein. Is it his contention or NBC's contention that none of those executives had any idea that any of this was going on ever until two days ago? Well, you have to read that statement carefully, Tucker. Right. The statement says we never got a complaint um, until Monday. So nobody filed a complaint, and let's right. take him at his word on that. But again, I think the issue is maybe there weren't complaints, but were there rumblings? What, you know, when you see, you know, what we just saw, um, you know, with him on the set with Meredith, right. you know, that again, that's done in front of a lot of people, including the, ca the the crew on the set, the people in the control room. So, and, and then Katie on Andy Andy. Um, Andy Cohen show, you know, at a point, did nobody hear any of this stuff? That's, a, that's, that's the question, uh, to which I hope we get an answer. Harvey, thank you. Sure, Tucker. Lauer's surprise firing adds a gallon of irony to a pretty aggressive interview he conducted with Bill O'Reilly, formerly of this channel, just two months ago. Over the last six months since your firing, have you done some soul searching? Have you have you done some self reflection? And have you looked at the way you treated women that you think now or think about differently now than you did at the time? Tammy Bruce is a radio show host. Joe Concha writes about the media for The Hill. Both are on the show frequently because they're great and they join us uh, on the set now. Uh, first to you, Joe, since you cover TV, watching that clip from today this morning, the, the shock on the faces of the two anchors, who I think are sincere people, by the way, yeah. uh, Hoda Kopi and Savannah Guthrie, it seemed real. On the other hand, isn't NBC's credibility on these things devalued by the fact that they held and prevented the airing of that Harvey Weinstein piece? That's, that's something we always have to go back to here. When we either believe the Vanity Fair reporters who said they've been working on this story for months, or we believe NBC that they got a complaint for the first time. It's very hard to believe. So Vanity Fair said they were working on a piece, the New York Times was as well, is yes. the idea that they had reached out, as I guess they would, to NBC to say we're working on this piece. Sure, we need confirmation, we need comment. We're hearing this, we're hearing that. I, I had heard on Monday uh, in earnest of this story it, it, that there was an investigation going on, I was trying to dig into it, and then suddenly this thing broke. And clearly the Times and Vanity Fair had the goods because you see these stories now. So, yeah, you have to go back to Ronan Farrow's piece in October that was squelched. He had the goods. He had audio tape of an NYPD sting operation and witness testimony, testimony from women that wanted to come forward. And they said, sorry, you don't have enough. He went to the New Yorker. And that's what's led to this whole cascade of name after name and media, entertainment, politics. It doesn't matter. Every day, today alone, Three accusations. Lauer, you had Garrison Keeler from NPR, which is Minnesota Public Radio. He's a legend uh, on radio. And Teddy Davis, who's a senior producer at CNN. So it doesn't matter what network this is happening at, what radio station, what right. industry. This is going to be something. This is going to be the story for weeks and months to come Here's almost every day. makes it a little different when it's a media figure, though. Media outlets, by definition, need to have some level of transparency because you need to trust them in a way you don't need to trust the people who make, I don't know, wheat thins. You mm -hmm. kind of have to believe they're not lying to you. Sure. But do we believe that they're not lying to us? Obviously not. And this is obviously something that the president has been able to bring up very clearly. This notion of whether or not people are telling you the truth. Because they happen to be on TV, is that enough for you to be able to believe them? And now, of course, that's breaking. What, what I can tell you also about the Today Show, and I feel sorry for Savannah Guthrie, but the senior producer of that program was fired earlier this month for inappropriate behavior senior with women. Senior Booker. Uh, well, yeah, they say here from um, uh, from Fox is that the closest producer, Matt Zimmerman, uh, the senior vice president, Matt Zimmerman, mm -hmm. was fired earlier this month. So we, we know that this may be, again, is systemic, not just Mr. Lauer. Uh, but you also have to note uh, that when you're looking at the, the nature of this kind of systemic dynamic, it is going to be a number of people. And this is where Andy Lack comes in. Very close personal friend with Matt Lauer. Uh, the questions about what he, who he, why he was protecting him so much, how far they thought it should go, and that variety was doing also a report for weeks. And so this was not necessarily a quick reaction or one that, you know, oh my gosh, we're horrified. 
this was coming down the pike. And maybe they saw that with Mr. Zimmerman taking it that way and wondering uh, if no one else at the Today Show, if Ms. If Ms. Guthrie was not informed about the nature of what was happening. Uh, but more will clearly come out, and it's, it's going to be difficult for that network, and I think for Mr. Lack as well. And interesting, by the way, Juanita Broderick just tweeted not too long ago, and I'm quoting, Andy Lack just fired Matt, Matt Lauer today. Why is Andy Lack still at NBC? His actions delaying my interview until after impeachment hearing of Bill Clinton is disgraceful. Remember, that was 1999. Very well. Those were rape allegations against a sitting president, and that story got spiked. So that's what Andy Broderick So if uh, anyone Broderick is going to know, out. it's going to be leadership, especially when there's a, a, a strong personal relationship between the individuals, and that kind of approach is going to infect the environment. <laughs> a number of people... Have a con concern with listening to my radio show note, uh, uh, you know, is this does this mean if you're creative, you're going to be a predator? What are we going to do? Is right. there going to be no one good to host shows or or to make movies? The fact is, this is like the mafia. A very few people who are awful have decided to close themselves off like they've done with conservative right. individuals as well making it a real controlled environment for themselves only. Lot, there's lots of talent out there, people who perhaps have not made it to the top because those men decided they were too much of a threat and wouldn't put up with this. So this is not a statement about every creative man or every person who's involved in film or television or news. It's about what we've allowed and what they've controlled for a period of time. Well, sure, it's about powerful people misusing their power. Yeah. But I, I guess I just I want to get back to the management part of it, mm -hmm. partly because we don't there's a lot we don't know. But my question is, why don't we know it? I mean, why wouldn't someone in Andy Lack's position, Noah Oppenheim's, sit down with a reporter, maybe even from NBC, but answer some pretty straightforward questions? I don't understand what would be the excuse not to do that. Tucker, we asked that question after the Harvey Weinstein right. story got spiked and we haven't heard anything from Oppenheim or Lack. I would think at this point. They have to come forward. Internal memos aren't enough. They have to speak to the press. When you're a press organization, you have to be transparent in these situations. And by the way, I, I want to compliment Melissa Francis, if I can, because in April of 2017, here's what she said. And boy, was this prophetic. As I watch other networks where I know there are predators throwing stones at us, I kind of sit there and wait for their time to come. Remember, she yes. worked at NBC also, at least the NBC. Because those other man managers at other networks know who they are, and the talent and people working there know too, the more people who hear from other people's stories and feel empowered to say something, the better. And well, I, I, was, I spent four years there, and I, I had that thought virtually every day as I watched people who probably shouldn't be throwing stones cast them. I can't control myself. How would you feel if you're Billy Bush tonight, who was fired from NBC for the crime of standing next to Donald Trump when he mm -hmm. said something vulgar? Yeah, this is why I think there's a lot of people who are actually genuinely surprised, even like Al Franken, of course, in Congress. When you see an environment or you know the environment is, is what you've been doing or people are worse than you, and you're the one who becomes the fall right, guy. Right. And, and Al Franken's thinking, I d didn't think I was doing anything wrong because it's the standard of what they were doing. Well, that is... And so suddenly, if the rules change, uh, I think it could be quite uh, difficult for someone like, uh, like Billy and others who get fired. No, he didn't do anything wrong. It's, yeah. it's Isn't it amazing, though, that in media, those who've been accused have lost their jobs. In politics, those who've been accused are still in there. Well, exactly we're working right. on that. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy Joe, thank you. Thank you.